Okay. And I think I think the voice was missing because I was un, I was unmute myself. And also, is this connected with your phone? No, no, I don't think so. I think we should connect it or else there will be lag because of the university. Uh, you think so? I think so. That's what because um, last time. this is now Edrom. Edrom should be strong enough. Let's try. Let's try that. Okay, what about the delay? Is that okay? No, the usual four seconds. How is my boy? It's, I believe it's longer than five seconds. Okay, so what I can do is that I can, uh, uh, I cannot change the, the latency anymore, so it's a normal latency. But hey, can you, can you put more lights, because it was very good, just a little while ago. Okay. That's very good. That's very good. Okay, so let's just get started. Uh, let me see, the one more thing that is need to be done is that I need to display Like this, and then uh, and what was the the key combination that I need to use here? It, what it was a uh, what? Windows B. And it was extended or duplicate? Duplicate. Okay, so now it's duplicate. HDMI to. Ah. Hey guys, remember how it was in the first lecture in a simulation of mechatronic machine? Big chaos. Yeah, and yeah, now we change the lecture room and guess what? Big chaos again. <laughs> Everything else is okay. The only problem is that we are unable to display. There is a problem with the screen. Right? Yeah, there is a problem in the screen too. But that's uh, because you know we're gonna fix that as soon as we can get this this system displayed too. Is not coming? This same place. Oh, okay, okay. I think I know where to press. Because uh, there is a mechanical switch here someplace. No, I don't think so. But it's someplace here. I need to use a flashlight because I'm old, so I don't see so well when it is dark. So, where the heck that could be? An alternative we could consider... Huh. Okay, what about that, that one here? No, that's uh, too risky to touch that. Okay, so hey, online participants. We almost there. The problem still is that uh, we are unable to display uh, this uh, screen to people that are in the lecture room. So we will make an effort to do that, and then once that is done, then we could to go. Here. Okay, what if we can make this picture bigger, this one here? Can we make it in a full screen mode? Yeah, we can. We can. Okay, what about this, guys? Not clear. And I'm uh, too big. Okay, so... Uh, sort of... You think so? Yeah. All right. So one, one more, th because I'm running out of the battery of this guy. So I only have 20% left. 
but you need to leave it here. Okay, and also we need to change this uh, lightning condition. So just a final thing. So uh, uh, excellent connection settings. What is that you recommend me to do? This computer. Okay, so you need to put the uh, connection uh, 16 minutes late from uh, reconnect successfully. So it's uh, getting close. We're almost there. Okay, so we're there. So uh, just that I need to put this in a presentation mode like this. And then the lightning condition such that the green screen and the chroma key, chroma key will work better. Bit more lights. Still a bit more. Oh, hold on, hold on. It comes with the delay, so maybe it's okay. So what do you guys say? Pretty good. Yeah, all right, so this is it. I guess that I need to get started because I need to be off today at uh, 1.45 at latest. 1.45, I have another meeting. So you guys gonna, you wanna be here? Okay, so at least in the beginning, at least in the beginning because I need to introduce. I have another meeting at 13. All right, okay, but you guys know Mustafa already. So he is the guy, he's that angry guy that makes you suffer. Uh, <laughs> and strong too. Was that what I was supposed to say? <laughs> so, <laughs> more is it more strong than vicious? I don't know. Uh, more Both. Than strong. Oh, okay, more vicious than a strong. Okay, that sounds good. So, so we, he most of is here to help with, with the technical things, and he will be involved with the creating as well. So, and uh, is more or less business as usual. Online looks perfect. Online looks perfect. It's better than the presentation here. Is it? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I see, I see that too. I see. Well, I'm not sure if I see that, but it's uh, <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. So, uh, so welcome to the best class, best course of uh, LUT University. This is what I mentioned to you guys. Uh, I don't know when it was. It's sometimes last year when we met in the course entitled Simulation of Mechatronic Machine. I mentioned that this is a course you can learn various aspects related to simulation. This course is entitled as a laboratory course. Try to emphasize that there is some practical assignments we need to do. And there will be some practical assignments that we need to do. But uh, this course is not just these practical assignments, but collecting information from various different sources. We will use uh, visiting lectures starting from next week, Tuesday. This was something that I realized earlier today that uh, next week, Tuesday, is a special day because we will get the visitor from Delft University of Technology. And as every year, this visitor is very much into the bicycle dynamics, dynamics of two wheel, two wheel vehicles. I got the information to my headset that connected, disconnected. I think it is okay now. All right. So anyway, so the first visit in lecture will be already on Tuesday, and that will be delivered by uh, Professor Arun Swat from Swat from Delft University, and is uh, just a little bit of um, something that is important you to know is that uh, Arun is awarded teacher, so he's an extremely good teacher, and he's been giving a talk also in this TED talk. You know, the TED talk is something that you need to have a certain level of educational skills, pedagogic skills, before you get invitation to that talk. So it's, I don't think that the average professor, I don't, pro, average professor has no place whatsoever in a TED talk. Is that so? No comments, no comments from you guys. <laughs> no, I was just uh, thinking that, uh, you know, because you need to be um, able to express your knowledge and wisdom in a short period of time and in a clear way. So it's, it's a challenge. Uh, I think the moment you publish it, nature, you can get a TED talk. I guess so too. I guess so too. 
But uh, anyway, so he been in a TED talk, and he published in, uh, was it in a science or nature? I don't remember which one of these two highly ranked journals. And, and amazingly enough, that uh, paper he published in uh, those high ranked journals was uh, related to bicycle dynamics. And then there is this uh, engineering Bible in Finland, which is called Technica Maima. That the Finnish guys know this knows this magazine. It's a popular magazine about the cars and technology. And there was a story about that and in uh, Technica Maima. This was right after he pub when he published the paper in Science about the bicycle dynamics. So he figured it out what keeps a bicycle in upright position and why it keeps stable. But it is actually a super stable system. Makes it possible to run something that looks unstable. All right, so anyways, welcome to course. And uh, now it's going to be either Mustafa or Suras. You need to take a look at the chat because I have no access. Okay, very good. So I have no access to see what's going on in the chat. Everything is fine. So far, only two people have commented. Uh, okay, and they say what? Com uh, some questions or? No, just saying hi and hello. Uh, oh, okay. Very good. Two of them are me and two. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So not very crowded. But hey, I recommend you guys to come to this lecture room in person next week because Arend is really good. He's really good. Super enjoyable. Take some uh, Coke, snack, candies with you. Sit down, lay back and enjoy. It's like going to movie theater, except better. All right. So simulation of mechatronic machine. That's uh, that's what going to be a subject matter of today. And like I say, I'm, I need to be off today after an hour and a five minutes. And uh, <clears throat> so the teachers are me and Suraj plus Mustafa, of course. Mustafa, you don't see in person because he is a guy under hood. I don't know how you say it, but uh, <laughs> so take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So moving in a shadow. So he's a. Uh, so whatever you think, I think that you're you're safe. Then that's when the Mustafa attacks you. <laughs> so, all right. But anyway, so he's taking care of these practical matters, such like this uh, green screen and other stuff. So, so it's gonna be three of us. And if you have any problems, any complaints, it's gonna be either Suraj or me. Yeah, and it's highly recommended that if you have any complaints, email it to both of us. So we will take a look. How is that we can handle that thing? I got this information all the time to my headset that I disconnected, connected. I hope that this is related to my mobile phone and not to this connection. Okay, let me just uh, take this Bluetooth off here so it's not bothering me too much. Okay, device disconnected. I think that this is the way to go. Very good. All right, so two teachers. And uh, what is it we're doing in this course? So here's a list of items. And, uh, and uh, you guys don't see the same that I do because of this 15 seconds delay. But you will see that momentarily. Uh, here it comes. Okay. So the, really the, the big deal is that uh, we're going to use the simulation tools a little bit of the same way that you learned already in a course entitled Simulation of a Mechatronic Machine. This time we take this uh, use of tools in another level, in many different aspects. And we emphasizing the modeling part of the course as 50% of the entire, I mean, the final grading will come from the simulation assignment. And only 50% will come from written exam. Written exams are made such that they are as enjoyable as possible, meaning that when we're going to discuss about this different subject matters, I'm getting started with the new subject matter by first introducing you possible questions that you can see in a written exam. And I'm going to limit myself to those questions only. And so I'm not allowed to ask anything outside of the question that you will see. There is a quite good number of questions, which makes your life not as enjoyable as you think, but you also have this opportunity to vote out one question out of the many. There may be something that is very, very complicated for you to understand, and there will be voting action right before the midterm exam, which allows you to take one question away from the list. 
and you will also get an opportunity to vote one question that will be in the exam for 100% certainty. So that's something that, based on the, your votes, the one question will be there, and you can trust that it will be in an exam paper. Make sure you can answer that question in a way that you'll score maximum number of, of uh, points. And then the rest of the questions are something that uh, you try to address as many as possible. So that's, that's what uh, is related to written exam. But there's going to be more information about that. Let's do this. Copy. And not copy. Don't copy. Now, uh, something that we haven't checked yet is that uh, we, as you all know, there is this uh, very new thing that makes life easier for you guys. And that's this AI-based um, tools that, that you can just uh, take the question and see if the AI-based uh, website can answer those questions. Uh, it, they may. They may be able to do that, and we need to figure it out. We need to double-check if it is clever enough that it can answer the question like, what is a Kimball locking? It may be able to do so. Uh, I, yeah, what do you guys think? Is it able to do it? Yeah, I believe yeah, yeah. Yeah, You think so? Yeah. Even a Kimball locking, something that is very technology, something like what's the difference between Euler angles and Euler parameters? Still? Yeah. No. To some extent. Really? But, but then there is a thing, like most of the answers are read by the humans, right? And like if I am reading, I can say if that is like just computer generated or the student answered it himself. Ah. If someone is copying, it's a strict uh, policy that we don't follow plagiarism at all. Yes. All right. So, so let me just let me just repeat that because that's very important to online participants to be aware of as well. So, uh, zero tolerance. What comes to plagiarism? So there are a few things, many things you can do it in your life, but two things that never ever gonna away from your life. So you commit the murder, it will follow you rest of your life. You commit the plagiarism, that too will follow rest of your life. It will hunt you down. Believe me. Because what can happen to you, and it has been a case a number of times already, that you're going to find yourself in the politics, and you're going to be a big shot polit politics prime minister or something. Then somebody comes to university and want to check, like, what about your exam paper, this and that, and figure out that, hey, there's a black area, and you will go down. It happens at, at it happened in, at least in Germany. It, it was in Germany. It wasn't a prime minister, but was high ranked high-ranked uh, uh, officer in the politics, and uh, he, the he, was that was black here, but uh, now at that time it was harder to detect it, now it's easier, so because AI helps us too, <laughs> <laughs> so it goes two ways, so it's a two-way road, okay, so don't do that, because uh, it's not going to leave you alone, so it comes after you, after years, so which one is better to commit murder or plagiarism? Don't do. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So go easy with that. So don't do it. All right. So, um, so what is an objective of the course? Something that is a new for you is that uh, we're gonna use a final term method. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the final term method. That's very good, very good. But we're gonna look at the final term method in a slightly different perspective than usually. So we're gonna look at the find a term of modeling in a way that we really kind of take a look at the nature of the final term of method into account. We're going to look something that is called polynomial expansion and safe functions. Because often, and this bothers me a little bit, often in, um, even in universities, final term of method is explained that there is a, not a decrease of freedom, and then there is nothing between these not a decrease of freedom. And final term method is exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. It's all about how you're thinking particles between these two extremes are behaving. So it's all about that. And how these particles can be predicted, predicted how their behavior can be estimated will be based on polynomials. It could be based on something else than polynomials as well. And that leads us another kind of the methods, like isogeometric method, which is I don't know how well it is doing at the moment, but at least a couple of years back, it was very much in a fashion. And it's an alternative for finite element method. 
and uh, how that is different than finite settlement, that all you will learn. And we're going to keep it in a way that I tried to keep it as um, comfortable as possible, but still in a way that you understand the con big concept behind, because uh, it's kind of needed. It's kind of needed. So polynomials, say functions, that's, uh, that's important in the flexible bodies. And then the big deal we're going to do is that we're going to take these flexible bodies and we're going to use it as a part of the dynamic analysis. And that's going to be possible with help of motor reduction. Have you guys already participated using this open in scores about messing dynamics? So you see is getting started before he say hello, he's saying motor reduction. And, uh, and then uh, his, his course is uh, from all the way beginning to end modal reduction. So we're gonna, we too gonna take a look at the modal reduction, but easier way than in UC scores. Okay, and then uh, again, the same thing that uh, we tried to learn in the simulation of mechatronic machine was that critical thinking against computer simulation. This is kind of weird because uh, I'm supposed to be uh, an advocate of uh, computer simulation, and I am. Um, but I still would like to emphasize that there are something that is a severe medical condition called simulation disease. And there is no good uh, medication to, to fix that. Simulation disease is something that goes to your brains, and it's not allowing you to think properly anymore but it keeps you or forces you to use simulation to solve every single problem, even the problems where the simulation is not optimal tool. You see that a lot. You know, you see that a particular younger generation have this tendency to get this uh, simulation disease. And you see that when you say to somebody that, okay, why don't you compute the deformation of a cantilever beam? You know that there is a analytical solutions available and you can find it out in a in a minute, and it's not very complicated, but the person decided to use very detailed finite element model to figure it out what's the deformation, and is not needed. Okay, so we get back to this uh, simulation disease and how is that you can get away from it a bit later. All right, then uh, a lot of different approaches we're going to take a look. So it's not going to be just, um, just the dynamics, but this is going to be this uh, finite element modeling, very important thing. Hey, hey. And uh, what is the relation between the different approaches? We're also going to use some time to see how is um, product lifecycle management tools, because they will be a part of your life if you decided to go to industry. And then uh, overview of modern simulation tools. So we're going to take a look at a little bit about the vehicle modeling. There's going to be contact modeling, finite element. Bicycle is a good example. And just so that what, how is that these approaches you will learn in the course have been used to solve practical problems. All right. So here is the simulation work. Uh, so uh, how much are we supposed to release about this? So this we're getting back to this in uh, guided tutorials, which will get started next week. Correct. Okay, but it's still going to be the symbol crane where you need to model the crane yeah, sorry about that the delay again. You, where you're gonna model the, the the crane by using flexible bodies. So you will combine finite element method. You will combine motor reduction, and you're gonna model this such the way that this capable the therefore. And uh, and then there's gonna be of course a little bit of a headache because of the hydraulic circuit, as is usually the case. But uh, Surat is trying to make your life easier, as easier as possible. Okay. So that's the simulation assignment. And here's what's going to happen. And this is not entirely true. So you will see this in, in a minute. Not in a minute, but in a 15 seconds. So it's a content of the course. I will speed up a little bit today. So because I want to um, get started with the three-dimensional multibody dynamics. Just that you, could, you, you are familiar with the most often used terms which are related to rotations. So you understand when you see the literature what they mean, so what they stand for. You already know this one way to describe the body orientation in the space, and that's based on error angles. 
But that method is not much used in modern computer simulation. And what are the methods that are heavily used? We will take an overview. We are not going to take a close details, but an overview. All right. So uh, then we're going to discuss about this flexible multi-body dynamics and why this is actually incorrect. Because week, week four, which is next week, it will be bicycle dynamics. It, it's mentioned later here, but it will be coming uh, already next week. That's simply because the visitor is always going to be with us uh, starting from uh, Sunday, this week Sunday. So, uh, again, uh, the slide will be visible here. So, it was a vehicle modeling. So, actually, this uh, Professor Aden Swap is a specialist in a vehicle modeling. So, if you have any questions, comments about uh, trains, railroad dynamics, off road vehicles, he is able to answer those questions. All right. So, that's what's going to happen. This is related to tutorials, and again, after 15 seconds, you will see it. I don't know, sort of, if there is anything that is worth to mention. Let me see. This one. So that's pretty much. Oh, uh, so this is incorrect in a sense that we are not going to start the, the, the tutorials this week, but next week. And uh, there is going to be two slots for tutorials. One only will be used because we have, how was it, 30 something participants in our course. So we don't need two classes, but one will be enough. And uh, that's going to be on Thursday. So let me just take a look at the other material. So this is. Uh, on Friday, uh, that slot will still be reserved for the ah. students Very good. Very good, very good. Did you mention something about the software that will be used? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Uh, but it's mainly SolidWorks. Uh, SolidWorks, Simscape. But if you, if somebody would like to use an Atoms, uh, you can do that. But most of the tutorials are with Simscape multibody because that's what we Okay. Have okay. So, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I need to take a look. So. I went ahead too much. So Suras mentioned that the, the software that will be mainly used is a Simscape. But, okay, the one thing I was about to say that you can also use a Mevea software, but you cannot, as the Mevea is currently lacking modeling of flexible bodies. So that would be another good choice. Hey, uh, Mustafa, you, are you coming back to collect yeah. this or? Yeah. You will? Yeah. All right. Hey, thank you very much, and uh, see you at uh, 15 to 2. Oh, okay. 15 to 2. Yeah, here, here is a creating formula. So, so uh, you need to get the accepted simulation work. And this is going to be made in uh, steps. And what are these steps? Those I will explain to you momentarily. And then uh, accept that written examination or two midterm exams. And I highly recommend as was the case in the simulation of mechatronic machine, to take these two midterm exams, because then you can be guaranteed that you can only find the questions that you see in the lectures, nothing else. That's that's a promise that I can give it to you. Sure. Uh, okay, there is just one question. Sure. Uh, asking, are the tutorials going to be available online as well? Okay, so, so the question is that are the tutorials available online as well? And Suras is answering. Yeah, so there will be a total of four to five guided tutorials. Okay. They will be available online. And I will deliver in such a way that first, if I'm introducing mechanics, there will be a tutorial. Then the coming two weeks, I will be there in the class to help the students with their problems. Okay. Okay, so, it's a, so answer is hybrid. So, it's a, yeah. so there is something that is um, first explained by videos. And then there's a hands-on help that is offered by, by Suraj. That's, that's how it goes. So your recommendation is to participate how? Both, online and in person. Okay, what if somebody is uh, located in uh, uh, Lapland someplace? So I, I will, uh, have that hands 
Okay. So All right. That, that's very important. So, okay. That, so, uh, I'm going to repeat it to make sure that everyone can hear it. So, when there is online, this hands on session, it's possible to participate to that by using Teams connection. And then it means that you just need to be able to share your screen with Suras because otherwise it's hard to help. Yes. Yes. So pl the, both. First, getting started by YouTube. Yeah. You know that the Suras YouTube channel is, uh, I cannot say that is the most popular in Finland, but is a top scoring top, what, 10? <laughs> okay, anyways, is uh, how many uh, we use so far? 100,000. 100,000. 100, Look at that. So 100,000 views. So uh, you, each day you get the truckload of money from YouTube, right? <laughs> no? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so uh, what's the limit when you start getting these money deliveries? Uh, I think... Uh, yeah, so the moment you have thousands of subscribers, you can monetize your channel. Oh, okay, okay. You can monetize. What? So the moment uh, you need to uh, sign some agreement with YouTube. Ah. Money that comes will be taxable and... Uh, ah, okay, okay. Yeah, they will verify you. Are you a real person? Or not? Okay, okay. They will check your channel if you're following the YouTube policy. Oh, okay, all right. Very complicated. No plagiarism. So, yeah. so did you did you make that uh, did you make that agreement? Yeah, yeah. You made it. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so please uh, share these with uh, your friends in other universities. So we want to collect more views. <laughs> so, uh, so two hundred thousand will be the next target. I think yeah. half a million. Half a million, yeah. I would say. That's very good. Okay. So, uh, now back to the formula. So, um, midterm exam, and as you will see, it's going to be somewhat easy as you already know all the questions. The final grading will be half and half, plus in class quizzes. In class quizzes is business as usual. So, no surprises. So, you can get uh, one extra point if you do in class quizzes, because everything will be rounded up. So, if you score, let's say, hypothetically, you score three from the written exam, four from simulation work. That's going to be rounded up, so it's going to be four. And if you're doing class quizzes, it's going to be five. That's simple. So it makes sense to participate in class quizzes. It makes sense to do, well, actually, there's no other choice. You just must do the simulation work and written examination. So as mentioned here, tutorials on Thursdays. Uh, yeah, not mentioned where, but uh, one of these computer classes. 7334. Three, 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 so. so it's going to be along this corridor. Not far. Okay, and then uh, this Friday session, that too is available. And Suras will not be there, but you have this place reserved for you. So if there's if the place is crowded, you can just go and say, hey guys, if you're not part of the simulation of uh, laboratory course, stand up, take your stuff and leave. Okay, so uh, that's it, and uh, let me see if I move too far off. Okay, the in-class quizzes, there is an information about that. I don't think that there's any surprises here, so it's going to be a total of 25 points. You will see that momentarily. And uh, you know how to answer, and we don't expect you to answer each of these questions correctly, but we're expecting you to do... Uh, 14 of them correctly and that means that if you participate each of the classes and you make your best effort you can get this one extra point to your final grading so that's something that is important and this class by the way i want to keep it in a i don't mind if we have that many or that this few participants in the class because there are a few things that i would like to explain to you and those are like cultural related things as well so i want to explain my knowledge about what a little bit about the career counseling, a little bit about uh, what makes sense in terms of your master thesis, off topics, but something that I, for some reason, don't know why, I feel that I, I really want to share that knowledge, or let's say not knowledge, but my views with you. Particular international students, you can benefit from that. Some of this stuff may be, 
uh, very clear to uh, to Finnish students, but still I wanted to insist about explaining about master thesis and stuff like that. A little bit about life in academia as well. You may not be interested at all, but you never know. Good to be aware of that, at least. At least. Okay, and with that, so uh, something about the midterm or mid reports. So we're expecting not you to do the simulation assignments in steps. And it goes such the way that uh, there will be, you will see that in a couple seconds. Okay, here it is. So uh, there will be mid reports, something that we see that you have made an effort to try to accomplish part that is a part of the bigger picture. If you miss that deadline, we are not angry to you, but we're going to take some points away from you. And how much we're going to take the points away from you is a 0 0.5, meaning that if you miss the one deadline, not a big deal, but your maximum grade from simulation assignment is no longer 5, but 4.5. You missed the two of them, your maximum is no longer 5, but it's going to be 4, so on and so forth. And there is how many mid uh, reports there is a total? Three. So you, if you miss all of them, so your maximum grade is 3.5. Why is this? Because we insist you to get started early as possible. This is related to uh, thesis work as well. Because, uh, oh, there are four. There are four. So one is final report. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, final report. If you miss the final report, not good. There will be consequences as well. Is it another five points? Five point, zero point five. Point, if you submit it late, it will be divided by two. Oh, it will be divided by two. Okay, so it can go such the way that uh, you miss the first one, second, and third. Your maximum is a three point five. You also miss that the final. So then it's three point five divided by two. So it's going to be one point seventy five, which is two. That's your maximum. So it's a hard game. All right, previous knowledge. Uh, one more thing, Ati, I think you should mention it uh, because of your mentioning about master thesis. Uh, so the lot of students uh, uh, asked me about uh, the English uh, master thesis in uh, Finland. Uh, so uh, is it the same for the master thesis or working with our laboratory? Ah. So the criteria is if you need to perform well in this course, you need to be interactive with uh, in the lectures, uh, for in the lecture, in the tutorials. And we will evaluate your performance and we will approach you instead of the other way around, so, like the previous years. So the, so the Zuras was highlighting that if you want to work with us, you want to get the uh, thesis position in our lab. So it goes such the way that we, uh, we will monitoring your performance and if we like your performance, we invite you to, to do something with us. And you have already been monitoring from the previous course. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've been wondering, like, who is, uh, who is this guy sitting in a dark forest with his goggles on, monitoring your life, it's us. <laughs> no, it's not us, but uh, we're monitoring how well you're doing. Because some of the guys, you may have this thing that you wanted to, to get the doctoral student position. It kind of makes sense. It comes with a certain benefit, which we get back, certain problems as well, which we get back to those as well. I want to give you as objective view that I can, what it means to be in academia. Because it's different than industry. But if you're going to keep this in your private information, I have a history in industry too. So I can uh, share that uh, thoughts with you as well. So, okay, so with that, the introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm slow, I'm slow. Okay. So uh, take a look at the recording afterwards. Take it easy. All right, so uh, something that is uh, related to introduction, and that will be somewhat brief because I would like to get started with the three-dimensional description. Again, three-dimensional description is very important if you are into the game technology because games, they're using specific ways to describe the rotations. And we're going to take a look, overview, what is the technology that is available at the moment? And what the, what's the difference within the different approaches? And why is somebody, something that is not based on error angles is the, the one that is dominating the description at the moment? Okay, so it's related to kinematics. Okay, what I will learn in this course, so that's something that 
I want to get started and this is coming with this this picture uh, again another 15 seconds and then you will see it okay so here it comes okay so uh, it's, it's going to be all the different kind of uh, commercial tools analyzing tools that you will learn to use together that's the main theme of this course so uh, SOLIDWORKS was mentioned SOLIDWORKS is something that you know that is often used to make these designs how things look like geometries and uh, how is it you can use this information to build a simulation model that will be that will be explained to you as will be explained how similar kind of information can be used to describe deformable bodies and how that you can do that by using finite summer method how this finite summer method and and models based on the solid works can be combined how these um, how different kind of uh, control algorithms can be combined to it so some kind of like an overview of how different things can be combined so we don't look things from one angle only but the number of angles that will be the theme so is a multi-body multi-body is still here yes it is still here but it's there's a finite settlement hydraulics control algorithms gap contact modeling so on and so forth so a lot of different aspects um the one thing that I want to give a big picture every now and then because you get these visitors from different aspects. So then after the visitors, I'll try to give you explain like, okay, what it means, like where this, this particular subject matter is located in an in a axis where there is a how much you can apply it and how uh, much it is being used in industry. So I'll try to give my overview to you. All right, so that's something. Uh, then we will take a look at the... A little bit about the latest technology related to uh, where the, the different analysis tools are are developing and how they are developing and what are the things they are including the software tools and uh, this is something this is a picture that you saw already so we i'm going to try you try to give you an overview about how very challenging applications like belts wire ropes and such how they can be modeled and what are the tools that are currently available in a commercial software how you can uh, how you can do this kind of a uh, very challenging things but still we're going to limit ourselves more or less the commercial software I, I don't want to speak too much about the research we do in LUT maybe every now and then just an overview so is there a comment no nope. all right so that's what's going to happen and then another very important subject matter is related to um, specialization of steel structures now I'm not sure if it is called steel structures, but the one that is led by Professor Timo Björk. What's the name of that specialization? Steel it's steel structures. Okay, steel structures. So, so our steel structures is well known worldwide because they are have they been busy to develop the different kind of analyzing tools to analyze uh, fatigue of welded structures. And uh, we're going to take a look how is the simulation can come into play and can help these guys that are specialized to fatigue. And we're going to look at the, the very practical cases, such like this crane that is still in use. So it was, uh, it been in use already 25, I don't know, more than 25 years, I think. Okay, but I can, I can, uh, you know, later I can play with the video of that. Was at the time the model was made. This one here. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that video? Because at that time that was made 27 years ago. I haven't seen the working model, but I've seen all these pictures from your piece. Okay, all right. Okay, there is a big temptation. Let me let me play this to you shortly. Uh, this is the problem in this course because I can easily get excited about something that is not really the subject of the course but I, I, I wanted to share with you and uh, here's a good example sorry about that and you guys can ask questions too and I try to address them as well as I can sometimes they may not be related to that much about the simulation but life okay uh, where is it now yesterday not here I think it is this one Okay, so let's see. Okay, you guys, it's just going to take a while before you can see it. 
and I'm not sure if this comes with the song. Yeah, this is annoying that there is this uh, delay. Tervetuloa nyt simuloinnin maailmaan. Simuloinnilla me ymmärrämme todellisuuden jäljittelmistä tietokoneen Okay, that's very good. That's very good. But anyways, I'm going to play this to you a bit later. So, uh, ilman, että meidän tarvii varsinaisesti rakentaa sitä laitetta. So this is this... You know who is this guy? <laughs> Correct. It was recorded in 95. 95. 95. So the... In Finnish, that's, uh, that's how I need to apologize that. But at that time, there was something that, is, that was called MTV. Okay, not MTV, you think that may be. But uh, that's, uh, that's a national TV. Still is a national TV. And that national TV wanted to make a series. So you haven't been popular from the biggest? No, no, that's, uh, that was... A, it, but that wasn't me. It was about, um, at the time, about the steel structures and how this new thing called simulation, because at that time it was a very new thing, how that can be used as a part of the whole business. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a... Uh, okay, so um, I'm not going to play that entire story to you, because it it's, uh, take more than an hour. Very boring. Very boring. No, only in my computer. <laughs> This is a, some a similar kind of a private information that this dancing business. <laughs> so in the chat, people saying respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I made a mistake because I did not get started with this way. But I know, I know, I don't know when they cut my my video, because I always use this because uh, you know that I'm, I'm taking the beginning part away, and I see okay oh. now it comes. Take it everything before that away. <laughs> okay, so back to this one. Hey, so uh, so it was related to this welding and fatigue. So we will learn a little bit about what is a problem in the welded structures and why is that they are suffering from fatigue? Because they are. And it's hard to get away with it. It's practically impossible. So it's all about how to control it. And you can control it. It's a very statistical thing, but still you can control it. Okay. And then this contacting, this is um, this is a lot of fun because um, I don't know where, how to play this. This uh, contacting is something that we can learn two different worlds about the smooth and non-smooth dynamics. Okay, you may, uh, what is it, uh, smooth and non-smooth is related to how is it you can describe the contacts. And these two approaches are completely different from each other. They both have a clear benefits and disadvantages. And we're going to take a look about this smooth and non-smooth dynamics. This one, this uh, tonal bearing you see here was actually um, part of the dissertation made by Jussi Sopanen. And that's based on smooth dynamics. It's something that you may be already aware of, because it's based on the how much geometries are penetrating. So if you, there is a ball, and uh, inner ring on outer ring or gauge, let's say inner ring and, uh, and the ball, how much the ball is penetrating to the inner ring. And this is amount of force that is, or uh, well, the force calculation is based on this penetration. And this is how you keep the bodies away from each other. Smooth dynamics. Non-smooth dynamics, in short, is that instead of using this penetration, you're using inequalities. Like, what we use to deal with the uh, constraints. But the constraints, if you have noticed, we always say this equation is equal than something. Inequalities, we say it's going to be more or equal than something. Meaning that, um, like, uh, like this, this uh, if this is a wheel, it can do everything it wants, but it cannot go through this surface. It can go up here, it can go down here, but this is a limit. So this is where the inequality will come into play. And it will be treated certain ways similarly than constraints, but certain way only. So that's, uh, that's something that is called non-smooth dynamics. All right, then here it comes. So let me see, half an hour time. So uh, 
So we get started from the 3D uh, multi-body dynamics, and uh, you will see this in momentarily. So we are hopefully able to cover some of the topics today. And I think we here's uh, here are the subject matters, and here comes the most important thing. Don't need to write it down and no need to memorize it, but this will be available in a Moodle database. Questions? So uh, first, uh, well, the, in the whole story that you see about the 3D multi-body dynamics, there is a total of 11 different questions. And these 11 different questions, well, they are listed here. So uh, what kind of a system can be analyzed using multi-body system dynamics? So we get back to that. And you know that it is a system where, as the title says, is a system that com consists of multiple bodies, and these bodies are connected together via constraints. That's a multi-body system. If there is a force, not necessarily called a multi-body system. We're also going to learn something that is called many-body, which is unofficial title for system that consists of very large number of bodies. So this is uh, limitations is usually like uh, thousands of bodies, so hundreds of. It's just a number of bodies. Uh, no, there are two different things. So it's a number of bodies, but the real difference comes from the fact that in many body systems, the, the interaction between the bodies are coming from inequalities. So it's this non-smooth dynamics. It typically used in a modeling of a large number of particles. Good example is a, is a sand. Vehicle, off-road vehicle, try to find its way top of the, the hill, which is covered by sand. This is where you need it. And you need that to be able to, uh, to design uh, proper vehicles for space applications. Mars, I don't know, moon, I think it is solved already, but you want to take a, a vehicle to moon, you better make sure that it can, uh, it's not getting stuck. And that's, uh, you can analyze it in this way. It is, it is, it is. So it's, uh, it comes with the uh, wheels and there are locks in the wheels. And I don't know how is the surface of the, of the Mars. Never been there. So uh, don't know. But I guess I heard that it's like a lot of sand. It's rocky, sandy combination of it. Okay, all right. All right, then the couple simulation, that's something we get back to that as well. And then the rotations, uh, why the rotations are more difficult in a space cell case than in a planar case. Each of these uh, aspects will be covered. Okay. And uh, we get started from this 3D multi-body dynamics. So this is a kind of like refreshing your mind about uh, what is uh, this whole thing about the multi-body system dynamics. So you will see this momentarily. Sorry about the delay. Here are the three questions. All right, now this is something that you already know. So just refreshing your mind. Again, you will see that soon. In the next class, we will fix this delay. Yeah, I think that I can just choose this. Um, what was this option? Because this was a normal uh, delay or what but that was called, there was this the latency, there is this uh, ultra low latency possibility as well. This, the good thing about this uh, usual... We will fix that project this week. So I, I hope so too. I hope so because it will be easier not to use this screen but just a regular project of you. Uh, this ultra low latency is something that is not allowing me to use a uh, close capturing while streaming. I could use a closed capturing here, but uh, I guess it's, well, you guys can put it on later if you want. Okay, multi-body, like I'm saying, so the system that consists of large number of bodies. And the very important thing was this thing that we do not make any assumption regarding the magnitude of rotation. Very important to understand that, because if you look at your nodes in a course of dynamics one and two, Typical assumption, almost all the time you do the assumption that the motion is limited. Rotation is limited, and it is limited to plus minus 10 degrees or something like that. 
this is a major assumption because it allows you to linearize or use the linearized equation of motion, which we are not using here. So we're using nonlinear equations of motion, and that's changed the game big time. So it's a major difference. And it can be applied to a wide variety of things. But again, the really the big deal about multi-body system dynamics is that the bodies are connected together via constraints. And these constraints are representing joints that are limiting the motion possibilities between the neighboring bodies. So that's what it is. All right, and then uh, moving on. So uh, then this coupled simulation, which uh, I'm not sure if I have a slides, but that means that we're combining different disciplines together. I will get back to this combining ways or the ways you can do the combinations. But it's like my mechanism, mechanism is modeled by using multi-body system dynamics. Hydraulics is modeled by using land fluid theory. And when you combine them together, that's called coupled simulation. How you can do it? There are two basic families how to do it. You can either put everything in a one big set of equations of motion called monolithic approach. You don't care about which is representing what, but you just put everything in a one package, you solve it. Or you can use something that is very much in a fashion at the moment and it's called co-simulation. So it meaning that there's one algorithm for one particular discipline and second algorithm, numerical and time integration scheme from another one. You're solving this by using one integration that is dedicated for this problem and another one by using dedicated integrators for this problem and then you're sharing information. How you're sharing information, that gives you different kind of the families within the co-simulation. There's quite many of them. We get back to that. All right. 3D uh, multi-body dynamics is like exactly what you know already in the planner case. No difference whatsoever. So the only thing is that um, dimensions are different because in three-dimensional space, we have three axes instead of two. We have three ways how the body can rotate. These three ways makes body rotation to be very problematic. And this is something that is a big difference between the planner and spatial case. You know that the body can rotate in a three different ways only. That, that's... There is no other way. But these um, algorithms that are based on three rotational parameters, meaning that there is a three parameters, and there are many ways we can do it, but three parameters anyways, each of them are suffering from mathematical difficulties. And the difficulty is typically that they are not explicitly able to tell how is a body orientation. They're suffering something that is called singularity. And like Euler angles, you know, it suffers from gimbal locking. And gimbal locking, there's a lot of uh, stories how that can make your life dangerous. Aerospace application in particular, it can be a serious business. All right, so anyways, three parameters, and here are the dimensions. Sorry that this again comes with a certain delay. I need to speed up a little bit because 20 minutes and I need to be off. I have a department meeting and I need to be there at 2 o'clock. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much what I just explained. Now, uh, I don't know where is my pen, but you know that uh, when there is this uh, three parameters. Uh, okay, I cannot do the drawings here today. No, I cannot. This one. Not allowing me to draw. Can I draw it here? Uh, no, definitely not. Oh, uh, okay. You know that the, if you have three parameters to describe the body rotation. Okay, so what you can do then is that you can also have an expression of angular velocities. Angular velocities that can be expressed in terms of global coordinates or local coordinates. Now the big problem is this, and you're not going to understand what I'm about to say, but I'm still going to say it. The problem is that these rotational parameters, or when you take a 
dime derivative of these rotational parameters, they are not equal than angular velocities. Uh, this is something like what? You know, like, am I saying like we're not saying like this? And uh, I need to explain this to you over and over again. But this is a major, major drawback when it comes to mathematical representation of three dimensional bodies. Now, next time, even today, when you walk back to your apartment, think about like maybe there is a way that you can still use the three parameters and you can make it in a way that is not suffering from these singularities. If you figure out that way, come to see me in my office. We will go together to see the rector. Rector will give you immediate new doctor degree, professorship, and then you take my office, of course, and I'm going to move someplace else. And then, uh, then you're going to be the world famous. That's how it goes. Simple like that. So think about it. And, uh, but, uh, well, I need to get back to that, like, why, why this is, uh, uh, okay, this couple simulation, this is what, uh, what about the couple simulations, so we're combining the different disciplines, that's what it is. Okay, description of particles, so these are the, uh, the, the equation we're going to use, this is something that you're very much familiar with. Where? Ah, uh, no, no, this is, uh, it's not willing me to, to, to write anything here. I need to take my, uh, another pen with me next time, so I think that need is that. Okay, here's, uh, the kinematics here. So this kinematics is no different that you have used to do. Someone accepted your degree in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just let me know that I can start packing my stuff, so, uh. And, uh, and you can be angry too. Okay, take your stuff and leave. And I will. All right. Okay, uh, then, uh, so this is a kinematics. And this is the first way that you can describe the orientation in three-dimensional space. And it's Euler angles. Questions related to Euler angles are, please explain the concept of Euler angles and explain the Kimball locking. And you will see that momentarily. So here it is. And uh, let's first take a look at the concept. This is something that you're very much familiar with. So Euler angles are first of all using three parameters. This is something that is important to understand. And it's based on three successive rotations. Usual scenario to use these rotations is the one that I explained to you earlier. So the first rotation takes a place around Z axis. Second rotation takes a place around once rotated x-axis. And third rotation takes a place two times rotated z-axis. Now you see already that, okay, there is this opportunity that the first and third rotations are not clear. So you don't know what is what. And it can happen if these two axes are in parallel with respect to each other. But this is what is called this gimbal locking. So Kimball locking is not a mechanical lock, but inability to describe rotations in three-dimensional space. Now you can change it. You can think that, okay, I can fix this problem by changing the order of rotations or making a different kind of sequence of rotations. It's not going to help you. You still have this problem. You can always put the gyroscope in a configuration that two axes are in parallel. And when that happens, then you are unable to differentiate what is what. And this is this famous locking situation. So you lose your ability to, to make a difference if this is a first or a third rotation. Or if you change in the sequence of rotations, the same kind of the problem. But again, inability to describe what is what. Uh, one question. Sure. So there are many systems like this which faces with the singularity issue, right? Yes. Oh, so how that is accounted? How are you you asking? Yeah, yeah. I mean, is it accounted in, in, the, in the literature? Yes, it is. Yes, it is because this is a serious problem in uh, in a simulation software too, because as soon as you are approaching this singularity configuration, gimbal locking configuration, what's going to happen to your rotation matrix, which is two uh, three by three matrix, 
is that you started to, your rank started to change. Your, 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 the rank is at how many independent rows and columns you have. So they are no longer independent, but they become to be dependent. So your ranking started to decrease. And the, the simulation software are all the time monitoring the ranking. And as soon as they started to recognize, hey, uh, we are started to approach uh, this uh, unpleasant configuration and uh, soon the system will collapse if we don't do anything. So what they do then is that they will add an artificial angle to their rotation matrix, which they then take away. So they add something and take it away. And this kind of game helps you to go through this uh, Kimball locking configuration. But uh, other than that, there because it, it's it's a nature of like inherent problem. Not much else you can do, except the way that the, uh, the students from LUT University will come with the better solution, and uh, this this famous one, the one that will become to be very famous. That could be the one. Okay, now how it goes mathematically? So it goes like this: is that each of these rotations you describe by three by three rotation matrix. This is what you learned already. When was it? September last year. So uh, you know that uh, this is where you see it. You see that this uh, unit vector is telling you where the rotation takes a place. Now, unable to write it, but you see the first matrix is something that uh, the third column is pointing or is telling you z-axis. In a second matrix, the first column is x-axis. And again, in the third matrix, the third column is a z-axis. So this is giving you what order of rotation, what angle or what axis of rotation you use. Now, the full uh, representation you can get by multiplying these three by three matrices together. And that's it. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. And uh, it looks... Uh, Okay, they're like the one that you will see momentarily. This is how it looks. Again, no need to memorize any of this stuff, but like the question was, explain the concept of error angles. We just need to see, we need to make a test trial, like if this AI-based algorithms are able to tell that. You guys think that they can really do something that complicated? They might. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, we need to test it. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, that's that's how it goes. And the final final expression is like this. But let me tell you something else. Okay, this is a method based on three parameters. And as I say, the usual way where the modern computer simulation tools are operating are not based on that. And the problem is this singularity business and this gimbal locking that I recommend you to take a look at the couple of YouTube channels where they really nicely explain about it. And uh, again, because of the delay, you don't see it at the moment, but you will soon. Here it is. Okay, take a look at this, this, this YouTube channel. They have very nice explanation about, you know, what's going to happen. And uh, it definitely helps you to explain this in your own words. Right. Now, as also mentioned, every time you're using these three parameters, you have a problem. This is the YouTube video, but I'm not going to play it because you don't, you don't hear the voice. But you just need to take a look at that by yourself. Uh, and here is this lady. Okay, again, the delay. This lady will explain another story, which is related to airspace applications very well explained so you can take a look at that too ah and then i have one in class quiz and then i can go back to this pay uh, method based on four parameters and you will see the in class quiz right after this lady's youtube channel here when using three rotational parameters a problem is singularity Physical interpretation of parameters, the usage of three parameters is limited to small rotations only. Are we going to get it? You know what? 100%. 100%. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, uh, 
This 100% was such a big deal to me. The one that happened, uh, I think it was November. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sorry that it, this is not yet on, but I'm going to, I'm going to look myself to suck it even I put it on momentarily. You know, I, uh, a week ago, no, last week, Thursday, I was selected to this. I got this big award, this uh, professor of the year. And in this award ceremony, they allowed me to use, uh, I was it like 15 minutes about telling myself. And I used that. I took this piece of uh, YouTube uh, video where you guys scored 100%. And I, was, I played that to audience. And I said, look at me. So I'm an outstanding teacher because, you know, the students are scoring 100%. And it was a lot of fun because I was like this and I was like <laughs> not believing my eyes. And uh, I think it was quite fun. A lot of fun. Okay, squeezes. Uh, this squeeze is on. Okay, so uh, you're good to go. Uh, now I'm not sure well, how well. Can, can you guys, are you able to lock in? Okay, so can you, uh, Suras, can you take a look if online participants are able to lock in? No complaints. No complaints. Okay, I got the, uh, some answers already. So let's see if uh, this again is uh, 100%. This time, no promises. No, nothing about the dancing or any of that stuff. It will be 100 You think so? The less number of participants, the less probability of making We'll see that. We'll see it. Okay, I will, I will get back to that in a, in a few minutes. And then uh, before that, I said that uh, there is this alternative which is based on four parameters. Uh, one participant is saying he can't. He cannot. Okay, um, ask, uh, so this one participant. No, zeros on the student code? No, no, no zeros. No zeros. No zeros. Okay, so uh, these two people are unable. To, the two people are unable to log in to Socrative. Okay, so uh, these two people. I hope that you can just send me an email, and vote. You know, put the put the. Is it was it A, B, or C? Yeah, it was A, B, and C. Which one is it correct? Okay. Now I will go back to. Where was it? Here is a Socrative. Okay, I got uh, nine answers only. So I think online are uh, 13 participants plus me. But some of them are sleeping for sure. I <laughs> okay, I got nine students and uh, because of this delay, I got to just uh, take a look. Oh my God, if it's going to be like this entire class, oh, thanks God. So you see, you will see that momentarily. <laughs> because here, how it look. So results, 100%. <laughs> but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see what's going to happen here. Somebody just voted. <laughs> so it came down to 90%. Very good. Okay, I, I need to take a look at that. So again, I hope that uh, the ones that are, those ones that are unable to log in, please email. Okay, Rotic Way Sequence, and I can open this, I just open this thing. So uh, now we're going to take a look at the something completely different mathematics. And we're going to explain you Rotic Way Sequence, and that is a kind of the mother or father, close relatives for each of these methods that are based on four parameters. And how it goes is like this. You take a, I need to take a bigger vector than this one. Okay, yeah, thank you. This is really good. So you take a vector like, like this one here. So it's a, an arbitrary vector, which is uh, having any orientation you want in a space. And then you take an assisting vector, which is this band here. This pen here is unit in length. So this is a unique vector. This is not. So this is just a random vector. What you're going to do then is that you're going to attach this unique vector to origin of your, or this, this uh, lengthy vector here. And then you take a hold of this unique vector 
and you will introduce the rotation that puts this uh, this uh, vector to other orientation in a space. What follows is an awful lot of mathematics where you're figuring out the relation between the original configuration and final configuration. And this original and final configuration will be a parameter of vector v. So how are you placing the vector v and the angle, how much you're introducing the orientation, how much you not the introducing, but how much you're changing the orientation. So that's going to be your rotational parameters. Where these four parameters are coming from then? Remember, this vector, this one here, is a vector in a three-dimensional space. So obviously, this one here needs three components, three parameters to describe this vector here. And then the fourth parameter is this angle. How much you oriented this new vector, that's going to be the angle of theta. So those are going to be your four parameters, four parameters. But they are not independent because this one here is unit in a length. So these three parameters that are associated to this vector here, they cannot have any numbers you want, but they must have numbers that makes this vector to be unit in a length. That's where the constraint, or the, well, constraint actually, is coming from. That's how these four parameters are coupled. So when you consider that there is originally four parameters, but one constraint, what is left is three, like is the case of uh, Euler angles. But this system is no longer suffering from singularity. Okay, so what, uh, because I'm running out of the time, I only have like two minutes left. Here are the questions, and then comes very involving mathematics to showing how you can describe this uh, vector on its original configuration and its rotated configuration. You can take a look at this involving mathematics, and we will take a look at that uh, a little bit later. So here is the setup that I just mentioned to you. This, uh, this delay is a little bit annoying. There was one comment. Yes. That where can I find this question answer platform? So maybe in the next class you can introduce this, uh, this Socrates thing because I think there are new students. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, all right. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, uh, so, it's, so just uh, specifically... So the problem is where you can find this Socrates website yeah, so or app. Where can I app. Find the question as a platform? Okay, so it's uh, this. Uh, I think it is this. Uh, Socrates is an app. You can install so this app. Have, you have that one slide from the previous. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll do it. Okay, here's the setup, and uh, we get back to these mathematical details next week, and it's all about how to find the relation between these two vectors, and these two vectors tells you how is a rotation matrix. And again, it's based on four parameters. Three of them are related to unit vector V, and the last one is related to angle theta. And because these three are describing unit vector V, they are coupled because of the unit length. So that's where it's coming from. So and again, uh, we'll get back to this mathematics. Each of these components I explained here, and the final solution is this one. By the way, there is something new, maybe new for you, and is uh, this uh, skew symmetric representation of a cross product of two vectors. This is something that may, you may not have heard about before, but it's not too complicated. It's just another alternative way to express the cross product of two vectors. And it's gonna be the one you see here. You know, if you have vector A and vector B, and if you have a cross product, you can compute the cross product as shown here. A little bit blurred, but you can imagine how it goes. Alternatively, you can take the vector A and build three by three matrix from the vector A. Just take the components, place it as it is shown here, and then the cross product you can get by multiplying this vector by this, excuse me, this matrix by this vector. You will see the, the, all these um, explanations in the lecture notes and the slides that I'm about to place in um, Moodle. But this is the time that I need to run. 
So I'm going to see you guys next week, Tuesday, and come to the lecture room because it's going to be that Iron Swap and his bicycles. All right. Thank you, guys. Now I just need to figure out where was what. I need to first close. So I can end streaming here, I think. Very good.